Now, what about the other cells that stop dividing? They develop a specialized structure so that they can perform a specific function. Now, these are the permanent tissue and the permanent tissue is of two types. Again, permanent, simple and complex. Simple tissue is made up of only one type of cells, but in the case of complex within tissue also there can be variation, which means there will be more than one type of cells. So, now first we will focus only on the simple tissue. Once again, if we, if we cut a slice from the stem or the root, what we will find is that just below the epidermis, there is a kind of packing tissue packing cells, this can be many layered. These are simple cells which are not very specialized and they have thin cell wall. This kind of tissue is called parenchyma. They are living and they are thin walled and their main function is storage. storage of food, storage of other compounds to some extent not too much, but to some extent it also provides sport. The parenchyma has certain variations like in the leaves what is required the green color which means chlorophyll or the chloroplast. So, if a parenchyma cell has chloroplast in it, then it is able to perform photosynthesis and in that case it is called chloronchyma. So, which kind of tissue will be present in leaves? The chloronchyma. If we go to aquatic plants, the characteristic of the aquatic plant is it can float like say lotus or water lily, but what provides it buoyancy? there are air spaces between the cells and when there are air spaces between the cells then it is called aeronchyma. Which are present even to some extent in the leaves in this as spongy tissue. So, there is spongy tissue or there is aeronchyma in leaves, there is aeronchyma in aquatic plants. In general, the parenchyma cells are not very tightly packed, they are in fact loosely arranged. So, there are lot of air spaces between them. So, there can be air spaces which are filled with other substances. So, that was about parenchyma. In the stalks or in the tender stem, we find another type of tissue, which is not exactly like parenchyma because it is not thin walled all along, but it is also not thick walled all along. Only in special areas like corners, they are thick walled like this. So, these corners are thick walled. So, because their corners are thick walled, obviously the central space in the cell is a little less than parenchyma. Another difference with the parenchyma is that they are closely arranged, there are no intercellular spaces. Now, what does this thickening do? This thickening is due to a compound called lignin and it provides mechanical support. And it also provides flexibility because the walls are not thick all along. You see if you see a tender stem, you will not be able to easily break it and that is required otherwise plant will keep breaking only. So, provides flexibility. This is present just below the 
parenchyma. Yeah, around you can sometimes say around the vascular bundles also. In addition to this, we also need some solid support, and that solid support is provided by the third type of tissue, and that is this is colenchyma. And the third type of tissue is sclerenchyma. In the sclerenchyma, the entire wall is thick like this. This is the wall. So, you can see how thick it is and what is the immediate implication that the lumen or the cavity is small because the wall is so thick and it is by lignin and these cells are dead. Colenchyma and parenchyma are living, but the sclerenchyma tissue or the sclerenchymatous tissue as it is called, they are very thick walled and they have little lumen thickness is due to lignin and sometimes they are almost there is no lumen and then they are called stone cells. So, if we see this as a round structure which is possible in a transverse section, what I am talking is of things in between this, the outermost layer and the vascular bundle. And of course, in the center in the pith also parenchyma is there. 